Meh, good enough. Alright, let's go. And so for this purpose here, we're just going to kind of lay it down really quickly on the raised areas and the parts where light is going to kind of more concentrate on the model and leave some of the some of the underpainting behind the undercoat gonna leave that behind and eventually we'll kind of we're just gonna build it up like that we'll let the uh, we will kind of get to these areas as well the underside areas but first we're gonna hit the, these parts You know when I first per when I purchased this model, the uh, the guy at the store was like, "Oh man, this guy's got a lot of skin showing. That's gonna be hard." And I was like, "Well, is it though? I don't know. I like painting skin. Maybe it's not very fun for some people, but I find it very fun. I guess maybe that comes from the art school background I have. That's like uh, I don't know, just something that I'm used to, something that I have embraced, maybe." This is very watery. And that's what we want. Another thing that I try and take into that I'm trying to kind of incorporate into my painting that I've picked up on in art school and never really truly applied to painting of miniatures is this idea of of painting along the the contours of the model and making your brush strokes conform to the contours of the model that's something that uh, kind of blew my mind in art school that that was a thing my instructor was like oh you should you know you should make the your brush strokes sort of flow with the 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 shapes of your painting it sounds a little weird but it makes sense and then yeah so I never really applied that to painting models but I was listening to a podcast with a with a very good painter I think hmm, sprocket world something like that and again he brought that advice up again how your brush strokes should really sort of flow with the with the with your model with your sculpture I was like, oh, I, <laughs> I remember that same advice from art college. Guess they were onto something. And it makes a lot of sense with a with a sculpted thing as well, like like miniatures, that you would do that, because you can kind of understand the contours of the model just by just by looking at it, just by by running your brush over it as I'm doing now you can kind of see and feel the contours when you're drawing or painting that's you're translating a 3d object to a 2d image so you have to kind of imagine and interpret that but you don't really have to do that for for working on a model So yeah, we're just getting the raised areas here. And the most recessed parts we're kind of leaving in shadow, but we will we will get to that part. But I think what we want to do is sort of build up build up the uh the raised detail. And another little trick you can do is kind of hold your model up to the light and see how the see how the shadows are falling. Now, if you've undercoated your model, it may have sort of flattened out everything so that you can't see the lighting as well. So in that case, I would suggest uh, before you even before you even um, start painting or even put the undercoat, you could uh, take a picture of your model just to see the, how the shadows fall. You could do it that way. Take a picture and put it in black and white. Maybe even mess around with the values. I've done stuff like that before too just to see
This is a stage I really enjoy though. It's kind of like, it's really easy and you don't really have to think too hard about it. The main reason I bought this model, by the way, was because um, I really enjoyed painting the Lord of the Rings uh, trolls. I had two of those models and I painted them uh, not too long ago. And they ended up looking really nice and again, those are models that were very fleshy, primarily just flesh tone. And I was able to really just build up a lot of, uh, a lot of values and, and gradients and stuff and different hues on the skin, build that up. And I thought, well, I could do something like that for this model. Even though it's, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not Lord of the Rings. I felt like the same theories kind of apply, especially again, because it's so, so primarily flesh toned. It's just a lot of skin. It's fun. It might be a little hard to see, but this model has a very, like, it. the skin is textured. It has this, it's not very deep, like the the grooves of the, of the texture, but it does have kind of like a, a textured skin look to it, which is kind of cool. I think I'm gonna try my painting handle that I just bought. I did attach a painting handle to this, you know, just a cup. But let's try the painting handle. I bought that for this purpose, so might as well give it a shot. Where is the... Uh... Let's close this thing up. Okay. And... Hmm. It's a little hard to tell where this, this cannot be skin. This must be cloth here because it, it, there's like all these scratches that are not present on the, on the rest of the model here. So there must be supposed to be some kind of cloth that he has all wrapped around his torso all around here. So I won't paint that skin. I was just about to. Let's get the feet. Bum, 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 bum. Oh yeah, let's get that painting handle. Let's try. <clears throat> Where is it? I think it's right here. Oops, sorry. This one here, I, I even have it in the box. This thing goes pretty, pretty large. Let's see if this is a little more comfortable to hold. Oh! Fuck. <laughs> it doesn't really... I would have to take it off of this plastic thing. No, 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 no. That's not going to work. If I glued it to his actual base, that might work. But he's far too heavy. Okay. Okay, let's see. Let's get the feet and there's toes, but we'll uh we're simply going to paint over the toes because we'll have to go back and and redo that detail. Again, I'm kind of mostly focusing on the parts where the light catches. So WizKids makes a line of um, of miniatures now where they're, you have to build them much like how you would build a Warhammer models. So they come on a sprue and everything. It's called, it's called like Dungeons and Dragons Frameworks. And they look decent. They look pretty good. It's there's a lot of the 
classic D and D kind of monsters, like a like a beholder and stuff like that. They look good, but the main appeal for a lot of these D and D miniatures, for me at least, is that they're fairly inexpensive relative to the to the Warhammer stuff, right? Including this model here, Borg Borgimos, which isn't D and D, as I said, it's um it's actually Magic the Gathering, but same diff. It's like this model was like twenty dollars or something like that, maybe a slightly more, maybe slightly less. But the equivalent model, the equivalent model in in Warhammer would have costed like like three times as much or something something crazy this guy is really big and in the Warhammer world a really big model like this yeah you're looking at like sixty dollars eighty dollars hundred bucks even so I mean I, I like the value mm, the co the quality I think speaks for itself uh, you get what you pay for it's it is noticeably not as as nice quality as as a Warhammer model as something from Games Workshop but it's not awful and it's certainly better than something that you might end up buying at like a, at like the dollar store you know if you really wanted to paint something or that you found at like Value Village or a thrift store at the you know like a McDonald's toy or something <laughs> definitely better than that I think so somewhere in between a McDonald's toy and uh, and a, a Warhammer figure lie uh, lie this line of, of miniatures that's what you're looking at now this guy has an ear but I'm not really sure where it is oh here it is okay and we gotta do his fist. Yeah, it's nice to mix things up. I've been, I've been building models, and I'm not, not super experienced at when it comes to building uh, model kits. I like painting them, but even then, I, I'm kind of, I have, haven't really painted many of the model kits that I have bought recently other than the exoframe. For example, Ritsuka, I don't really plan on painting. So yeah, I've been mostly been focusing on my building skills, to be honest. Not slide, have I considered, thought about messing around with a Gundam artifact or two? I actually have, and I was, yeah, so, um, I was just thinking about that like today or yesterday because I, I saw some really amazing Gundam artifact models like the stuff that people have done with them and they look so good and unfortunately um, all the hobby stores that I've been to none of them carry it like I go to I whenever I can we try and um, visit hob like actual brick and mortar hobby shops and support our local stores right and yeah none of them none of them of them have them not that i've noticed at least maybe i'm not looking hard enough but yeah i've seen some really amazing stuff that people have done with the gundam artifact so i i really want to get one and so maybe maybe i'll end up just picking one up online after all because i have been looking i've been looking for a good long while actually and like i said i just recently thought about them because i had seen some really really nice models some really really nice uh, paint jobs on them and I was like oh I want I want they seem like they lend themselves to be painted like a miniature yeah and, and it and I've definitely seen that people have kind of taken that approach with them I've seen both sides where people paint like apply a more like your typical gunplum model kit style to it to the painting and that looked really good and then I've seen yeah like a more miniature painting style to them as well and that looks really good 
It all looks good. They look fun. Have you built any of them, uh, Not Slide? I'd be interested in knowing what the experience is like. I don't even know how much they cost. Are they fairly inexpensive? I feel like they should be, but you never know. They could be like, they could be like, like kind of like a ripoff. I don't know. So now I've kind of laid down basically where I want the shadows to go. And when you look at like from the underside, it's still like kind of like the bare gray. But when you look at it from the top, I've kind of gotten like most of the highlight parts. And now I'm going to kind of go back and get the raised parts again, hit the raised parts again. And this is a process where it's going to take a while to really get to a point where or I'm really happy with it, but I'm I enjoy just just this phase of kind of just laying down colors and not really thinking too hard about it. I like it. Not so I've been waiting for these new ones to come out because I prefer the new set over the first set. Okay. So what are the new ones? Like um what are some of the the new ones that are going to come out? Yeah, I haven't really looked super close. I think there's a, um, so from the original series, there was like uh, Sinanju, Shinanju. That looked kind of cool. Um, what else? Can't really recall specifically what else was from the first wave. And I think what I'll do now is I'm gonna go, maybe we'll make a bit of a darker grayish and kind of get those in between parts now. We'll do that soon. Let's uh let's actually just kind of lay down a bit more of the the base coat. Cuz you're going to have to if you want like a really solid coverage, you're going to have to do several layers. Ooh, hype train guys. It's the hype train. <laughs> Let me close the window here. I don't really have a set kind of technique as far as as far as like how how to do skin tone, how to do flesh. I just kind of kind of just go with my gut really. I just kind of keep on working at it until it seems good enough, <laughs> until it seems right. That's how I painted in 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 art school as well. I just kind of kept on going <laughs> until it, until the project was due or until I got sick of it. So Let's keep on going. And yeah, I, I should make like a, a low, a darker tone that we can kind of cover some of these areas. I'm not too concerned about overpainting and getting into the other areas too. If it happens, it happens. Yeah, I know that on uh, Zaku Aurelius's uh, channel that he ran a contest with uh, with the Gundam artifact models, and yeah, some of the results were really cool. They look really fun. And this is the kind of thing where I should be holding the model in a way where it's sort of like the angle where we're going to be viewing it at it viewing it most and that way we can kind of place the highlights where they make sense and so once we do once we get to a point where we're really happy with with the uh, with this stage we can kind of tighten things up. We can go in and and start tightening up, tightening up the midtones, kind of bringing the the values and the shades together through through glazing and stuff.
I'm, I'm guessing that those artifact models aren't particularly hard to put together, but at the same time, I kind of hope that they're not super easy as well. Like, I hope it's at least kind of satisfying to build. But they definitely seem like the kind of thing where you would want to paint them just because they come in in just one flat color, right? They don't really have any any uh, separate parts that are colored. It's all just like this beigey yellow kind of color. Poor Morikimos. I also um, have to remember to get to the eye. I, sh I need to do his eye earlier than normal. Sometimes I leave the eye for last and ultimately I think that's a bad idea just because you've painted everything to like the final kind of standard like the final level and you've left and if I've left the eye last I'd be less likely to really go in and make the eye look as good as possible for fear of messing up everything else around it. Am I on the shot here? So this mostly looks almost like I'm working in black and white. This this gray color does have kind of like a coolish, a cool blue tint to it. Um, and I think when I get around to glazing, we're gonna kind of introduce a lot more, a lot more variation, a lot more blues and stuff. But that looks like a decent attempt at the f at what I'm seeing the front here. Gonna get a few more layers on. I guess that's the trick is just doing it in small steps. The other thing that I've never really tried with miniature painting that I see a lot of the a lot of the really really amazing talented painters do is that they kind of um they kind of work on a single part exclusively and they bring that all the way up to like the final stage and then they move on to the next part and they work like that especially with big models kind of like this I'm starting to understand the the appeal of that because Mm, even with something like this, the Beholder, which is like a medium-sized model, I painted it like I paint like most small, small miniatures, 28 millimeter miniatures, 32 millimeter, where you just kind of base coat the whole thing, paint the whole thing, even to the extent that I'm doing now. But sometimes you kind of get to a point where it just looks fine and you're like, eh, that's fine. And you know that there's more steps to be done for the entire model. But you, for me, at least, I just never get around to it because I think it just looks fine the way it is. So I'm trying to, uh, I would like to get to that point. I'm not doing it now, but I think it's a good move that I need to kind of practice. I wonder if I could use, I think maybe a, a fun thing to experiment with for this model is also kind of using using like weathering powder and stuff on this model as well. 
we'll see how that works that might be kind of fun and also I want to buy some snow effects and try and make like a diorama that's or the decorate the base for this model in a way where it's like feels like it's snowing I think that might be fun because again this is a snow giant I'm painting it like a snow giant the uh, the actual magic the gathering character is more of like a like a cyclopean cyclopean beast of some kind but I don't know some something in my mind was like ice giant I did buy this in February <laughs> so maybe that's that's part of it and so yeah the a lot of the under coat is showing through a lot of the gray is showing through it's not a big deal the more layers that you put the more sort of opaque more solid that it'll become and we can thin this down a lot and kind of kind of just glaze the rest of the parts maybe we can do that but actually I don't think that's a good idea and when your paint is really thin like this you kind of want to push it around so that it concentrates and pools up in the places that you want it to rather than just letting it pool up any which way anywhere you anywhere it just happens to pull up yeah you kind of want to push it around to ensure that it's kind of like in the places where it should be now let's take a look let's kind of back away and take a look and yeah, so we're kind of building up the definition, just sort of blocking out the areas. And we're not we're not thinking about making smooth blends or transitions right now. We're just focusing on the focusing on on the values. And one thing I'll I'll probably end up doing as well is kind of doing a lot of stippling and and more kind of like directional painting and sort of deliberately making marks but that's kind of later that's for later this guy is super glued really nicely onto this base I hope it doesn't fall off <laughs> Another nice thing about this miniature is that he's so big that it's a little easier for for you guys to see what I'm doing because you know if I'm working on a small like a really small human sized miniature it's kind of uh, it's kind of hard to see for the viewers speaking of humans so games workshop had a What do they call it? Like Warhammer Fest event. It's actually going on all week long. Actually, or for the next few days. I think maybe tomorrow and the next day that'll be it. But yesterday they showed some Warhammer 40k stuff. They showed some some Eldar. Uh, sorry, not Eldar. Uh, they showed one squat model, and they showed some a bit of Horus Heresy models. Uh, what else? Oh, Chaos. Chaos was primarily the main focus. They showed a lot of new Chaos Space Marine stuff as well as um, Chaos Cultists or whatever they're called. It's all very fine. All, all very good. That's cool. Um, the squats I'm, I'm kind of interested in because that's like this long running joke at this point with, with Games Workshop. And 
and the uh, factions that are in 40k they used to have a faction called the squats which are effectively space dwarves but they they kind of nuke them they kind of put them away for a good long time just and there's conflicting reports as to why but I think at the end of the day they just weren't compelling as an army in the same sense as everything else that had that they've done they're kind of jokey but they're bringing them back and they have kind of reconsidered them and made them look a little more appropriate a little more suitable for the Warhammer world Warhammer 40k universe that is so that's neat but I'm not you know as much as I've been painting uh, lately if I'm painting Warhammer stuff it's usually Warhammer 40k stuff uh, I'm, I'm still at heart more of a Warhammer Fantasy Age of Sigmar type guy and really mostly just a Warhammer Fantasy not even Age of Sigmar so today they had Age of Sigmar showing off some new stuff for that and again also the stuff that they showed was fine there's like a new Skaven, mo Skaven model Skaven are like the rat people that look cool they showed some stuff like that but they teased um, a fully reinvented uh, human faction and that was kind of what I was getting at when I was like saying speaking of humans it took a while to get there but yeah that's what I wanted to get at finally they're going to really sort of craft and and build up a normal human faction for Age of Sigmar and I'm pretty excited about that because that's just been missing from Warhammer Age of Sigmar that is for a very long time the what you might consider as like the base human faction for for Age of Sigmar are more like space marines they're just like big space marines and that's not too exciting to me they didn't really make a normal normal human faction specifically for Age of Sigmar so that'll be really interesting to see and I think the main appeal for a lot of people when it comes to Warhammer and 40k was that we understand Night Trap do you want me to change the category uh yeah sure you can change it if you want I mean yeah you can put me in art I guess and I think it should be really thin we kind of want it thin so that's good and there we go now let's try and let's see if we don't like it we can always take it back and I kinda wanna I don't wanna have too much of it on my brush interesting let's carry on and see how this works how this fares it's a little more I th thought it would kind of let more of the gray underpainting show the gray primer show but it's actually fairly opaque but uh eh. we're just gonna keep going that's the f that's what I like to do at least let's just stubbornly carry for carry on 
and yeah we're just gonna build up a bunch of layers anyways You can kind of, I have some, a darker, a darker reddish brown mixed that we can add. Yeah, I think it should get a little darker. I think we should uh, make it a little thinner because it is a little opaque. Gotta be careful how I hold this thing, because <laughs> if I if I let the weight of the rest of the model tip too far, it's gonna just snap off of this thing, which I don't want. Just because they're frost giants, it doesn't mean like red blood doesn't flow through their veins. That's the, that's the one thing I've kind of thought about too, is how even with orcs, for example, I I often see people paint orcs and they, they kind of shade with green, darker greens and stuff. But realistically, um, orcs also have uh, red blood and so they blush and their their skin becomes flush in the same way that a human would. And so it helps to think about that if you're going to if you're going to go for a bit more realism, I guess. This this pinkish hue that I have going on here, it's kind of uh, serving as sort of like a flesh tone, which I want to get away from. I don't think I want my model to be too fleshy, but we can um, always adjust that after. And another place where a lot of blood kind of collects is at the tips of the fingers. So we can kind of, tips of the fingers and the toes So that is pretty okay for that. Now let's do this. And again, we're gonna, you know, this is all just sort of layering on. So it's going to look ultimately pretty different from all this. I think, that's the hope. <laughs> Already, it, it's looking pretty cool, pretty interesting. Even though, as I said, this is not sort of like the end game for this model. It's kind of interesting. And you want to occasionally clean your brush off. Make sure it's not, make sure it's not, um, the paint isn't drawing on it.
Did you change my category? Where am I now? <laughs> I mean, there's people that paint Warhammer. Oh, you put me in art. Okay, whatever. I've never really... No, I have painted in the art category a couple of times. Like, painting and drawing, that is. But thanks for that night trap. Yeah, I didn't even think about changing my category. I, I mean, yeah, there's people that uh, paint miniatures in the, in the uh, arts, or rather the hobby. <laughs> no, what's it called? Crafts, makers and crafting. There's definitely people that paint miniatures in that category, too. I remember Bacon saying that. In, in a sense, it kind of doesn't matter so long as you have the appropriate tags. I mean, sure. I don't really know how people find me necessarily. Do they use the tags? Do they just search, for example, miniature painting via tags? Or do they just go into the categories? And so we might do a second um, a second pass with this. And it, at this point, it's kind of like a glaze. Kind of tinting the those darkest parts. And letting, letting the highlight kind of show through. And you can kind of continue to do this repeatedly, kind of glazing continually glazing until it looks smooth you can kind of do that and again the, for me at least when it comes to glazing I try and um, I try and push around the paint it's so watery at this point right it's very very thin and you want to push it into the places where you want it to pool up as I said and not get it into the not it pool not let it pool up in places where you don't want it and yeah i don't think i'll be doing any wet blending necessarily for this model but i will probably be doing some stippling i don't know i haven't really thought about it I have streamed in the Warhammer category, um, but I try and keep that to when I'm actually doing Warhammer stuff. I've definitely seen people that have painted other models, non-Games Workshop models, in the Warhammer category. Yeah, I don't think Twitch is going to like bust down my doors or something if I, if I were to ever do that. I don't think they really care. But I try and I try and keep it where it makes sense. Okay, let's just take a look here and see how we're doing. Getting a little rosy now. I think it's looking pretty good so far. And yeah, this is really just the very early stages. And to look at it far away, I think it looks okay. If you were to look at it really up close, you'd probably see how how chaotic this is. It's not very not doing this in a very structured and clean kind of way. But <laughs> it's like sort of my favorite part. I sort of really love this phase where you're just kind of being messy. I like that. And again, the knuckles and stuff, that's a place where the blood is going to collect. So we try and focus on on getting the knuckles, and especially he's supposed to be gripping this uh, this axe, the death grip, very tightly. So we want to get that, and then the face. 
I think the hair. I'm not really sure how we're gonna do the hair. I was thinking maybe, maybe like a really, really white gray kind of hair, or maybe like a fiery red. I'm not sure. I'll have to look at the um, how D and D frost giants look. That's sort of what I'm basing this off of. thing with a big model like this is you have to kind of think about all the think about painting all the spots and I might have missed stuff like like the total like underneath this palm I've I haven't painted that so I gotta get there let's do that now how are we doing for time Oops, sorry scratch the mic 237 all right not bad not bad probably go in with a finer brush here and like I said I need to get to the I need to fully render that eye at some point not yet but soon so I don't want to leave that till the very very end I don't think that'll be good okay so we did his underneath his palm mostly Still a few areas. See, you really got to think about the model. Keep on turning it around and seeing it as a three-dimensional object to make sure you get all the spots. Because it's going to be super annoying <laughs> if you notice it later. You're like, and you just, you've more or less finished painting it, and you're just like, oh my god, I just completely forgot about one spot or something. Just make sure that we've got all the in between the fingers and all of that. Yeah, there's still there's still places that I've noticed I haven't really gotten to. Turning the figure around. Okay, and let's get those knuckles too. As I was saying, the knuckles. I don't actually, I'm not sure if it's a matter of the blood collecting in those spots or more. It's like mm, the blood vessels there are very close to the skin and it's a very, like, you know, it's a very, um, it's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Separate part. It's so thin, and it's an appendage, so the blood is more visible underneath. Is that what it is? I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. Well, that's looking pretty good. Let's clean our brush. Let's take a little drinky here. Take a look at our progress. Now we're just sort of laying down the values and now that the paint is dried, we are seeing <laughs> we're seeing a lot of the gray show through 
and we want to get to a point where where we're not really seeing the gray come through so I think we need to go in a whole lot harder with uh, with the other tones we need to go in much harder with that to the point where we're not really seeing that seeing that come through let's actually take a quick look at some of the other stuff we have going on waiting to to dry such as the sprue glue for Ritsuka this is it right here let's close that real quick and where's my little stirring stick let's see how that is going yeah it's going it's it's goo we just need to periodically mix it to make sure that it's getting it's getting to the point where we want it I think by later tonight we might be able to to do this phase oh by the way night trap if you're uh, still around so I took a look at the s sprue glue that I had made previously for for Fumina and it dried like I mean it's been several weeks now at this point so it dried which is fine but it was I was actually able to completely remove it from the jar as if it was like dried paint it just came out as one solid piece so it is reusable in that sense so uh, now we know where is it oh it's right here look at that it's virtually clean that was it I just was able to take it out as one solid piece is it do I have it <laughs> look this is it right here <laughs> and I could actually reuse it you could like revive this right by putting more acetate but there's no point because I'm not gonna really use this anymore I don't think but <laughs> yeah look at that <laughs> kind of neat it's just plastic What was the other thing? Oh, yeah. Ooh, look at our soup. Look at our soup. It looks really good, actually. Look. Cl Ooh, I like it. I like it. I don't think I need to even put that, like, uh, layer of, of yellow. I was thinking about putting some yellow, like a yellow glaze. I don't think that's necessary. It looks really good. Oh, can you see it? Much better than a sticker? Yeah, let's look at the sticker. Wah, wah. Two dimensional. That's no fun. Here we go. And by the way, the way I did this was I just kind of took a glob of it straight from the pot with my brush and then just plopped it on. I didn't really carefully brush it on because I wanted it to I didn't really want any brush strokes I just wanted it to pool up and settle so yeah I'm pretty happy about that that's pretty cool and I do think I want to try and put some light into this thing I think it's doable it might not look super amazing but I want to try put some lights just from the dollar store give that a shot <laughs> why not Otherwise, it's really just a rectangle. And I think if I were to ever practice with uh, with adding lighting to models, this is the perfect model to sort of practice with. It's just a, it's just a box. All right, so we have this reddish brown that we're going to kind of apply. But I think we need a smaller brush. Don't know why I said it that way. Um, let's see, let's use this one. Let's use this, which I need to kind of clean. It's kind of gotten beaten up. Let's get a drink here. All right. Now let's try and see how this is going to be like. How thick is it? It's going to um it's gonna dry and look a little more a little more blended, I think. But we'll just apply this to the areas that are dark. 
I'm gonna try and hold my brush a little looser. I, I do have a tendency to grip too tightly onto my brush, so I'm gonna be a little more cautious of that. Conscious of that so that I can paint for extended periods of time and not get hand cramps. And again, I'm kind of directing the brush strokes. This paint is very, very, very thin, and so as I'm applying it, it does look kind of strong, but I think it'll become a bit more blended as we as it dries. feet. But I do think that the deepest shadows should probably have a lot more blue in it, so this is not going to be like the final final stage of the shadows. Hmm. if a, 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 a slightly thicker brush will kind of do a better job of what I'm kind of looking to do here. Let's go back to the one I was using. I find this pretty fun, pretty chill and relaxing doing this stuff. I've never tried those like contrast paints that Citadel have now. I wonder if they're any good. Or like uh, Army Painter sell this thing that's just like tone. I don't know what they call it. It's like a dipping thing. You like just dip your model straight up in there. And it almost looks like a jar of uh, like a can of of wood stain, like wood varnish. It almost just looks like that. And your models end up having like a pretty decent shading on them. Never, I've never tried that, but I mean, if you really wanted to paint an army quickly, that seems like a really good way of doing it. <laughs> That's the thing a lot of um, Warhammer people are trying to look, looking to do, right? Is just, just get the do job done quickly and the results, the results need to look good enough. They don't have to be amazing, they just have to be good. I mean, for me, I'm not, I'm not really thinking about an army 
per se like painting a full army although I have been working on my Eldar stuff I'm not thinking about like doing an army super quickly so I can get to a tournament or anything I'm just sort of painting painting what I have and just taking my time with it So here we are, and I think this part here we need to be very careful to get the paint kind of thin and brush on those, the darker parts, and build that up and kind of make it a glaze even. And I think I'm going to go in with some bluish blue too for the shadows. I enjoy painting skin tone, but yeah, I don't really have a formula for what I do. I just kind of go for it, <laughs> hope for the best, and usually it turns out okay. But because we've been in recent years sort of rediscovering Warhammer and stuff, looking through our old miniatures, um, in Night Trap we were just looking at some of our old stuff and there was like he he brought out this mini that i painted but i forgot that i did it and i was just like whoa look at the skin on this one like it was like some some kind of like a, what was it he wasn't an elf but he looked like a, a, a elf wood elf wizard he, he wasn't that though he just looked like one he was human and i was like wow the skin looks so good on that one and he was like, you did that. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> this is like the deepest part of, of his back here. And so it should be a lot more in shadow. And yeah, this is like a very glaze-like paint at this point, and I'm kind of, I've gotten to the point where I'm kind of working with it a little better. I still maintain that uh, painting miniatures kind of help me understand figure painting in art college a little better. <laughs> Gave me a slight advantage when it came to, to figure painting in, in school. And uh, I've, I've told this story before, but <laughs> I remember just the very early days of, of art school and one of the first few lessons that we had at the start for figure painting, painting humans, painting people, and the teacher, our instructor, is just going around looking at everyone's work, assessing everyone, you know, seeing who might need more help, seeing who may not need as much help in terms of just getting started and or who looked like they knew what they were doing somewhat. <laughs> I'm just painting along. And then our instructor comes by and he's like, he's like, who taught you? What school did you go, what school did you go to? <laughs> Expecting me to mention like, you know, one of the notable art schools, I guess, or high schools rather. And I was like, I don't know. I just went to a normal high school, I guess. <laughs> our, our art program in high school wasn't, wasn't, um particularly noteworthy I guess in that respect but he really wanted to know because it seemed like it seemed like it seemed like I, kn I knew what I was doing <laughs> but I was just painting in a way that that just felt 
right to me coming from Warhammer. <laughs> and he was like, have you painted figures before? Or like, have you painted, you know, figures as in people? Like, have you painted before? I was like, no, not really. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid actually saying like, I paint little toys. <laughs> Eventually you just, yeah, you just kind of gave up. But that, I thought that was pretty funny. Although, um, in high school, my, our art program, I think it eventually would go on to achieve some kind of, um, special consideration for, for the arts. And that was based off of my work. It was, well, not just me, but it was kind of based off of some of the work that I had done. And so, and so I never benefited from any of the stuff that our, my high school would eventually go on to get um, but you know they used my work I guess as an example of of why our school might be uh, worthy of consideration for for some programs or something like that and again yeah I, I didn't get anything out of that but other than an award I guess I won a, some kind of award in during graduation for art which was kind of cool I didn't know that I was going to be getting that it was, I mean it's a high school award so uh, I guess in the greater scheme of things it doesn't it didn't really matter all that much but it was at least something to put on the on the college application form it sounded pretty good right when you're applying to colleges <laughs> if you won an award So the next step, I think, is to get some blue into the darker, darker parts. And yeah, we kind of want to blend it, some of these parts a whole lot more than they, they are right now. They're not blended at all, in fact. They're just sort of blocked out and relying on glazing and the thinned down paints to kind of, kind of act as, a, as an in-between. Cool, looking pretty cool. See right here, this this is the very first part that I started to paint with this darker brownish red. And it it's thicker, it's not uh, as thin. It doesn't look as good. Cause it looks like I'm sort of deliberately kind of like painting in the shading in a in kind of like a hmm, a painterly fashion in a stylistic sort of way. Which is not what I'm going for. I kind of want to just slowly glaze the areas, but we can fix that. Yeah, see this is more kind of like what I want. Really thin down. I didn't thin it down enough initially. Thin this down. It's actually uh, running out this uh, this tone here, this reddish brown, kind of running low on it, and I don't want to mix more, so I'm just gonna keep thinning it out. <laughs> I think we're almost done with this this stage, anyways. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's get more. I can hear a little bit of like, of the, the model kind of wanting to peel off the weight. 
to make sure I'm not holding this thing far too far too much in the extreme. Okay, pretty nice. Pretty nice you. Let's just And then when you go over this, when you go over these spots with like a, a a lighter glaze closer to the to the original light blue, you can start to kind of come get the in between. You can sort of find the 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 midpoint. And there's no there's no um there's no mixing of the paint. Like I'm not taking the the light blue and then this reddish brown and mixing them. I'm just more or less just glazing very thin layers. I'm more or less just doing that to achieve what looks like several different mixed colors, but it's just a blend. And I think um when you look at it from a distance, it'll probably look pretty nice, but when you look up close, you'll probably see, especially at this point, you'll see how it doesn't hold up to closer scrutiny. You'll definitely see how how not smooth it is. But I think um, the more we work at it, and the more we kind of follow the textures and of the model, the more we get to that, it'll start to get to a point where it looks a, a lot smoother and it'll hold up. It'll hold up to closer scrutiny. Whew. How's it going? Let's uh, get a drink here. One thing about painting for me is that I can keep going and I have been going for about three hours now without without really much of a break. You kind of want to continue with the momentum that you have and you also want to um, use up all the paint that, I, that, that has been taken out <laughs> before it dries. I strongly dislike wasting paint. So we're just going to keep going till till we get to a point where there's no paint. There's no more paint left because it I, I would have to take out more. And then that's when we'll stop probably. <laughs> Sometimes you can just take your thumb and kind of just brush off. It was nice to come back to some painting because, yeah, like I said, I haven't really done much of this. Well, I mean, I was painting the exo frame, and I was learning some new techniques for that. That was kind of cool. Yeah, at this point, like, I feel like the, the sort of, like, the clusters of muscles have been kind of, like, have been kind of just shaped as if, as if just individual clusters. Like, I've been just thinking of them, of them as, as just, like, okay, there's a round thing here, so we're gonna just shade that, and then a round thing here, we'll shade that. But eventually, I need to get to a point where we're kind of more thinking about an overall lighting situation, such that, like, like as you can see, when we look underneath the model, it's it's a lot darker, right? A lot of brownish and red. And then when we look from above, 
we're seeing a lot of the lighter tones. So yeah, we need to think about like the lighting in that sense, and less and less of a individual kind of cluster of muscles, and more just an overall thing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, but I do, I do think that we need to get in some of that blue, and then that might be the last thing we do for today, because we are at the three hour mark, so kind of getting close to our, our max limit for the day. Do I have water? Hmm. I do have water, but I just had some energy drink. gonna get a little bit of this stuff and hope that the um that I haven't fully it hasn't fully dried it kind of has fully dried <laughs> okay we need to put a little more brown and red then a touch of brown and red there's a red I don't know if that's enough. And the brown. And probably a touch of the, the blue as well. I don't know if that's enough. Let's see what this turns into. Kind of like a bluish grayish. I think that might be good. But I think we might need to put a little more blue in there. Let's do that. Let's add a little more blue. And we're going to be very selective of where we put this. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's kind of good. I think this is what we want, maybe. <laughs> and let's add a bit more water. All right. Now, what kind of brush are we going to use for this stage? Well, let's start with the. Let's start with this because we gotta do like the detail of the feet. like the the darkest recessed parts will have this this bluish tone shadowy and I thinned it down so it's kind of flowing So that was like the toes, and it's looking, them feet looking pretty good. Now we're just kind of getting the, the separation here, the loincloth, and we'll, we'll work our way towards like the other shadowy areas. And I want this really thin. So that you don't really see the brush marks, which you are. <laughs> I 
you know, I've been thinking a lot about the difference between Warhammer painting and and um, and model painting, like like um, painting Gundams and stuff. It it is a different kind of mentality. It is a different style, and there are people that kind of blend the two. Even um, Night Trap has has a uh, kind of blended the two styles. Really cool result. And also on YouTube, there's um miniature model mayhem that does that too but it's an interesting thing to think about and I don't really have like a concrete reason why there's a difference or 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 what that difference is I couldn't tell you like a hundred percent I know exactly why it's different and this is why but for me I think a part of it has to do with like the way the lighting is painted on to a Citadel miniature, the lighting is painted onto Warhammer miniatures. Let's kind of flood that area there. That's kind of part of the difference for me. Whereas when you're doing scale modeling, for cars or tanks and stuff like that. I don't think you really paint the lighting in the same sense, right? For example, if you're painting a, a car and you want your car to look like, you know, a uh, Porsche red or something like that, you would find that matching red Porsche color and spray it on or whatever. And then there you go. But you're not really considering how to bake in the lighting onto the model in the same way you would for like a Warhammer tank. Like the way, maybe that's the better way to put it, is like how someone would paint a, a tank in um, for scale modeling, like a World War II tank for example, might be different than how a Warhammer painter might paint a tank. And then there's times when like the two things kind of blend in a lot more like when it comes to weathering and stuff some of the some of the techniques are very similar or or pretty much just the same so, yeah i think about that sometimes it's pretty interesting interesting to me at least <laughs> okay. I'm just trying to see where we need to place these this blue here. And again, this is very thin. Should be at least. And I'm gonna just Sometimes I feel the brush is too loaded. And it's gonna make for like too drastic for what I want. So we kind of have to go in with another brush, one that's like just with just a damp, and you can kind of wick away at the at what I've done. What have you done? Push it around, and then come back in with this. And here's where his butt crack would be. Got a deep butt crack. <laughs> and again, we're just gonna go in like this. Butt crack definition. And I'm kind of thinking about just the darkest areas where, where this dark blue should be. So the underside. side of the muscles and we can move the model around to get to the spots we want.
got to... Man, this this axe is so bent. It looks so weird. It, it just happened in the box when I, when I kind of packed it away because I didn't want to have too many unpainted models, like, staring at me. <laughs> it must have got bent in the box, unfortunately. So I have to bend it back. Which I think we can do. I don't think it's a big deal, but it's it's kind of distracting in its own way. Trying to get all those bots that I think need to have like the darker. You know what? I think we need to use a softer, broader brush. I think this is really the way to go for this. It just kind of softly goes into the areas that we want. Okay. Now, time for this side. So maybe what I'll do is I'll, when it comes to really tightening up all the shading and the highlighting and everything, when we're really looking at the, at sort of the highlights, maybe when we get to that point, I will work on them individually rather than like globally all, all across the model. Because that's the kind of thing where if I just focus on one area, I think I'll do a better job rather than trying to work on everything all at once. We are nearing my my max limit here in terms of my focus and attention. So we're going to wrap things up pretty soon, but let's just keep going for now. We'll take another look at the uh, at the noodles, the bowl of udon. We'll see how that is has gone. I, I think it looks really good so far. I'm very happy with it. Looks very shiny. Looks very wet and juicy. <laughs> and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna line up some uh, some Warhammer stuff to paint too. Uh, maybe this weekend I'll try and strip some models or get some stuff lined up, and that'll be like the Warhammer interlude before we get back to some more um, some more miniatures. Sorry, some more Gunpla. I only have two Gunpla models, or rather two Plamo models to work on actually, so I don't actually have a lot. So for example, like the underside of his arm here, it's, it's supposed to be, you know, very... It's under shadow, it's very deep. And so we can kind of go in a little more heavy with this uh, with this blue to get that across. You have to be selective about it because you don't want to uniformly apply this shadow everywhere because then it just looks flat. You need to think about those darker areas and where you want to put it. I just noticed here that the I did a line of this blue, and it's kind of dried and beaded up in a way that I don't like, but we'll try and fix it. Okay, so for example, underneath here, we can kind of, underneath his leg here, we can kind of go in a lot more heavy with this. these cool shadows.
and again on this leg as well underneath and it's looking pretty cool so far I think at least and this is really just the first the earliest steps kind of laying down the groundwork for later when we're going to apply a lot more Uh, a lot more detail to the individual parts, a lot more detail to the to the legs and the skin and the textures of the skin. We want to bring that all out, but you kind of have to lay this groundwork first before you do all that, I think at least. That's how I work. And it's working out fine in the sense that I'm very, I'm very much nearing the end of my the paint that I have mixed for this, getting close to the end. We got a raid. It's two quick builds. How's it going, too quick? Welcome, everyone. What's up? What were you? What were you working on there, two quick builds? I think I was. Actually, I think I was lurking earlier today. Um, seeing you work on some stuff. But hey, how's it going, everyone? Thanks for the raid. Appreciate it. First time. No bounce. See no play. Raid! PG Kami. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's too quick. Building Starscream. It was pretty neat. Oh. Was that a, a, a Starscream model from based off of the movie? Or was that the one from, like, uh, based off of the IDW? line of models because I saw I saw at a store at a hobby store in Kingston there was a, a line of models based off of the movie like the Bumblebee movie and actually there it comes with pre-painted parts which I thought was kind of cool pre-painted parts too quick I just finished my first D&D &D mini oh damn what was it old school was it really like a true old school last model like a like a metal one <laughs> was it lead that's like uh that's like super super old school like stranger things that's cool though i actually um i've been looking at some DD &D miniatures oh this one here is from WizKids, but it is not um D and D. He's from Magic: The Gathering, but for all intents and purposes, it's practically a D and D mini. IDW Gen One Flame Toys. The Bumblebee ones aren't too bad from what I've seen, and they're much cheaper. Also, oh, well, I like cheap, but I wonder if that means they're kind of like, like cheap feeling too, like, like cheap quality, which is not so good. I don't like that part. Flame Toys. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of like a newish thing. How 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 recent are those um those IDW Flame Toys um Transformer model kits? They seem kind of new or at least for someone like me that has been out of the hobby for a good long while, I'm not too familiar with them. Too quick epic encounters web of the spider tyrant oh you know what yeah so I, I was lurking on your stream and i did see that i saw that that miniature like in the corner and i was like what is that i i don't know what that is i should have asked <laughs> nice do you play uh D, D too quick I've actually never played D&D. &D. I've played D&D &D video games and computer games, and I love uh, Baldur's Gate and stuff, but I've never actually played D&D. &D. I even have, like, a couple of D&D &D starter sets for, for playing, but I've never actually played it. I don't know. I don't know why that is. You're going to play for the first time soon? Cool. And then you got that ready to go. I should find um, I should find like a local 
group of of D and D players. Is that what they're called? <laughs> a local group of D and D guys and gals, and um, and I'll say, hey, I'm not really sure I want to play, but I want to paint your figures. So can we work something out? <laughs> I'll paint your figures, guys. I want to. You guys buy the monsters. I just. I'll just paint them. Not slide. D and D is genuinely some of the most fun I have playing games with people. LARPing, uh, do, do, do. LARPing's fun as hell too, but you have to be willing to be a weirdo. I am pretty willing to be a weirdo, to be honest. I think uh, I've I've fully accepted my weirdo ness. <laughs> yeah, LARPing. That's cool, man. I've seen some pictures of people LARPing like in in Russia or some sort of like Eastern European country. And they go all in like it's like it turns into like a lifestyle like uh, uh, specifically LARPing Warhammer and they will build like amazing outfits and costumes of uh, of Skaven, the rat people, um, amazing armor and stuff. And then they'll just chill in like a forest or something for <laughs> a weekend or for a, the better part of a day. It's pretty amazing. Too quick. I have a giant basilisk and a giant dragon that are really good to paint in the epic encounters line. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think I've seen those epic encounters line uh, miniatures. They're kind of like in really stylish boxes, and they come with um, they come with some info or something, right? Like they come with some some stuff for the actual game. I did see that uh, uh, WizKids has recently gotten into producing model kits that are more like Warhammer in the sense that they have they have um they're built from the frame they're not pre-assembled as this one this one here was pre-assembled and pre-primed which I'm not too crazy about to be honest but um it's a fairly inexpensive line but yeah they're newer stuff you have to straight up build them much like you would uh, uh, a normal model kit but for all the extra work that you have to do, they actually cost more. Uh, so I, I suppose they feel like the quality is a lot better in terms of like the sculpting quality. But I'm pretty interested. Too quick, yeah, they do. And the mini for 45 couldn't beat it. Uh, what is the mini for 45? Oh, for 45 dollars. Duh. <laughs> yes, a lot of these miniatures. Um, that WizKids produce, they're fairly inexpensive. It's just that the new line, the newer line has got me kind of like, mm, I don't know. I don't know if I want to shell out the dough for the newer line, but I do want a new Beholder miniature. I have this one, which is uh, Beholder Senpai. He's, uh, he's always by my side watching me. <laughs> and this one's 3D printed, which I just picked up at like a, at some kind of event, but I kind of want a official Beholder miniature. So at that point, should I get the Frameworks one, the new one that I was talking about, or should I get like the pre-assembled line? I don't know. Too quick. Uh, I'd rather just invest in a resin printer rather than buy more minis. Yeah, I feel like um. I've been uh, I've I've picked up on a lot of advice about that as well like um a lot of people saying I should get a a resin printer. I would like to get a resin printer, but I honestly don't have the space for it. I don't have the space and I don't really have yeah, it's really a matter of space cuz where I work and I paint is my room and that's really the only space that I have to do all this stuff. If I had a basement or something or a garage I think that would work out better, but I don't <laughs> live in an apartment. But um, there are some services out there that you can buy. You can like hire other people to print your models or something. I've seen something like that, just kind of interesting. And in, in Ontario, they have like you can use the Toronto Library, or not Toronto, but like yeah, in Ontario, 
you can use the library and they can print some stuff for you which is kind of cool but man if I had a 3d printer I'd be printing all sorts of crap all the time I'd be printing like uh, extra bodies for my Mecha Masume models giving them big boobs <laughs> planning to get a Mars 3 for Xmas. I have a space. Just need the extra dough. Yeah. But like you could almost turn it into like a side hustle too, right? Like you could you could print models on the side for people and you could probably make a little dough on the side. Make a little business out of it. Cuz I've definitely seen that too. People buy like the license for they don't even sculpt the miniatures themselves or like you know what I mean like 3d sculpt them they don't do that themselves they just acquire the license for for the sell of miniatures and then yeah I've seen that like at flea markets people selling um, d and d terrain and stuff or monsters or busts of of uh, World of Warcraft characters and stuff it's pretty pretty cool huh? Okay, let's take a look here. Let's take a moment to look. That's another thing I've been talking and thinking about my art school days. And one of the things that my instructor always told me was to to step back from your painting. Step back. Never, because we have a tendency to, when we're painting, to just narrow in and look at the details and just, just like focus on the one thing. But uh, yeah, I've been, I'm sort of remembering that we need to step back from the painting, look at it from a distance, and sort of assess it as an overall painting. And that way we can get a better understanding of how we can fix it, what things that need to be addressed. And yeah, I think the biggest takeaway I have here is that the shading, I need to think about like where the shadows fall overall on the model. Bum, bum, bum. 